In this video, we're going to learn how to use a different technique to be able to process and fatten up our bass. In the previous bass patch using Native Instruments Razor, I'd shown you an approach where we used an instrument rack. So we go over to our Razor patch. You see, I put Razor up top, and then I created a sub patch underneath in Operator and layered them together using EQs on the sub to shave out the top and an EQ on the top to shave out the bottom and melded them together using some compression to make them sound like one patch. And that is definitely one approach to creating a layered bass. Now with Massive, because Massive has so many oscillators and it's such a fat sounding synth already, we were able to cover the whole frequency spectrum all the way down into the sub range by using this smooth square oscillator that's routed out through filter two using the low pass filter. And in this case, I'm gonna use a completely different technique and this is relatively unique to Ableton. Ableton has the ability to, within a single track, create a rack that will result in parallel processing. And that's going to be especially useful when it comes to processing our bass here. We're going to start from a preset because that's going to save us quite a bit of time. So we start by going to Audio Effects, and we expand Audio Effect Rack. And if you go down, you see a folder here called Bass Amp. And inside Bass Amp, you will see a preset called Split Chorus. I'm going to take that and drag it right here. If for some reason you don't see this preset, it probably means you need to rebuild your live library, and you can do that by going into your preferences. Now what Bass Split Chorus does is it's effectively a multi-band effects processing rack. If you expand so you can see the chains, you see we have a low band, mid band, and high band. And what each band is doing is using an EQ8 to be able to isolate a certain frequency range. In this case, it's taking out all the highs, leaving us with the lows. If we click on the mid band, you can see it's just giving us the mids, high band, the highs, and then we actually have a dry band, which is completely bypassed. So it's able to mix the dry signal with these. And what this is doing is it's actually putting a chorus plugin on each one of the bands, but we're just gonna use it for the EQs because you'll notice here by the green dots, that each one of these EQs has been macroed to the front panel. And it's quite nice because if we go to the low band, you'll see this low pass EQ is mapped to crossover low and the mid band high pass EQ is mapped to exactly the same frequency. So if we move that, the crossover frequency, it's moving both. And that's quite time consuming to be able to set up. So that's why I use this preset. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna dial in the crossover frequencies. I like my crossover for the low band to begin actually quite low. Say 100 hertz or maybe even a little bit lower, we can adjust that. And the high crossover frequency, we can probably have that happen maybe 1K or 1.5K. Now what this is also doing is, you can see it's also putting chorus plugins on everything, but we're gonna, for the most part, I think probably delete these, especially on the low end. You'd never want chorus on a low band. I don't know why you'd put chorus on your sub, that's silly. So we're gonna take that out. The other thing you will want to do with these EQs is by default, I think Ableton for some reason has not set them in high quality mode. So you just want to right click on each one of these guys, set the EQ to high quality mode. There's no reason why you wouldn't use high quality in the studio. So just make sure you've done that. And now we have a nicely band split multi-band effects processing rack. <laughs> 